Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowd, This is what the kingdom of God is like. A man throws seed on the land. Night and day while he sleeps, when he is awake, the seed is sprouting and growing. How? He does not know. Of its own accord, the land produces first the shoot, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the crop is ready, he loses no time. He starts to reap because the harvest has come. He also said, what can we say the kingdom of God is like? What parable can we find for it? It is like a mustard seed, which at the time of its sowing in the soil is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet once it is sown, it grows into the biggest shrub of them all and puts out big branches so that the birds of the air can shelter in its shade. Using many parables like these, he spoke the word to them so far as they were capable of understanding. He could not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything to his disciples when they were alone. The Gospel of the Lord. Our readings today are reminding us of some core values of virtues with the spiritual life. In our Gospel reading, Jesus talks about the man who comes and sows the seed day and night while he sleeps and while he's awake. The seed is sprouted and it grows. How? He doesn't know. It grows. And the way in which the seed finds a ready soil is how it actually grows. So he, has, he talks another parable where you have four kinds of soil. And uh, only one of that soil actually produces the kind of harvest that he is speaking about here. So if our hearts are ready soil, the seed falls, it catches, it grows. If our hearts are not ready soil, what happens? What happens? Huh? What happens? It shrink back and it dead. It dry up, it quail up. The, gospel, the first reading speaks to that from the book of Hebrews. Reminding that all the suffering that we, we have, that we have met after we've come to the light of Christ, is really there to help us to grow. And that, that suffering is important in our journey and we mustn't get confused in believing that somehow if we give our life to Christ that we must have no more suffering after that. You know some people get confused with that? Some people actually believe if they give their life to Christ that's the end of suffering. After that they should have pure bliss, plenty money and everything should go exactly how they think it should go. Well, I, I check the Bible to and fro back and front and I can't find that. What I do find is, my child, if you want to serve the Lord, prepare yourself an ordeal. And so, how do we become the kind of soil that God wants us to become? The suffering is part of that. And suffering has its own role in, in the development of that soil and making sure the soil is fertile. And, and the, in that sense, the reading from the first reading helps us understand the gospel it says you know we are not the sort of people who draw back and pull back on our word pull back on our on our commitment pull back on on what we first started on we we undertook to live a life of grace and to give ourselves completely to christ and we are not the kind of people to draw back many people when they encounter suffering along the journey that's when they want to draw back you want to pull back from God. Because this thing too hard, too difficult, it's too whatever. 
But we are not the kind of people to pull back. He says, we are the sort of people who keep faithful until our souls are saved. So the readings together are reminding us that, that the seed of faith in our life has been sown by God. And it is God who makes that seed grow. But we have to provide an ingredient into that. We have to have a re receptive heart as good soil for the seed. And we have to commit not to pull back. To have perseverance through our living as to ensure that the seed that is growing becomes a big tree. So as we come to the Eucharist today, let us thank God for the grace of faith that he has planted in our hearts and in our life. Because it is his gift. Let us thank God that it has grown inside of us. That too is his gift. And let's, thank, let's ask him for the grace that we need for perseverance. That we don't pull back. That we don't rub, stop short of the journey. And let's also ask for the grace for the inner transformation of our hearts. That our hearts will be ready and receptive always to his word and to the seed of faith that he wants to plant. Amen.